Since the term global recession was uttered in 2008, it has been a race against an unpredictable clock for banking organizations to protect the assets of their clients. Here to talk to me today about the future of private banking is Per Strongback, MD of Carnegie Asset Management based here in Geneva. Per, thank you very much for coming into the studio. Thank you, Natalie. The markets are and continue to be unpredictable and increasingly scenario dependent, yet banks must remain consistent in their performance. What actions are you taking to safeguard your clients? Well, I think um, it's a rather difficult situation we're faced in here. Uh, a lot of banks are chasing the same clients with the same products, trying to yet again promise uh, new Klondikes and new results which should be you know, bringing them into to super wealth. Um, I actually think this time is over for, for quite some time, hopefully. Uh, there's been too many promises. There's been too many products, too many ready-made solutions. And um, I don't think the clients, uh, the bank's clients, uh, believe in this anymore. So the best way to get the trust back is to basically also go back to, to where we were starting with the uh, investment uh, strategies, which was buy things that you understand, uh, stick on to your holdings, do not try to speculate, uh, make sure that you're, you're, you have a goal for your assets. Uh, what are you going to use your wealth for? Is it to speculate? Is it for your coming family? Is it for your children's upbringing, going to school? Um, that's where I think we're heading. Back to the much more simple ways of, of investing. I know that you're particularly interested in alternative investment. Is there the argument that now more than ever portfolios should remain diversified? I think diversification is, as you say, is, is probably even more important now than it's, it's ever been. And why? Because there is no real security in equities. Uh, there is no real security in bonds. We see government bonds, governments actually going down potentially. We, we all know which ones we're, we're thinking about. Uh, the, the money market is very, very difficult. We've seen tremendous moves in, in cross currencies, euro to dollar, dollar to Swiss franc, uh, sterling. Uh, it's, it's a very, very tough period. So yes, uh, it, it's crucial to really have this uh, diversification hat on now. But if we look on the positive also, is this not an opportunity for organizations to adapt their business models to grow and to change to try and meet this current environment? Well, yes, it would be if we hadn't created such a, a, a huge animal around the banking system. Uh, we have so many me mega banks out there trying to sell products, sell IDs, rather than to sell trust and, 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 and advice. And um, as you know, I, I used to run the fund of hedge fund uh, with the idea of, of uh, trying to get the, the risk down in, in the portfolio. The problem is that hedge funds, and probably even more fun of hedge funds, have been a little bit the, the instrument for buying good performance with no risk, uh, compared very often to bond risk, and that has been completely wrong. And uh, people lost a lot of money on these uh, investments because they also did not really understand what they were buying. Is that the fault of the banks? Do you think people need to take more responsibility in what they're buying into? I don't say it's the fault of the banks. I think the, the instrument as such is, is great and it's here to stay. Uh, the real problem is that it's very complex, even for us working in the industry, trying to you know, depict the way a fund manager is actually making money is very, very hard. And then to try to explain that to the clients is also very difficult. So private clients, there aren't that many that really have the understanding of this complex world. Institutionals, absolutely, because they are professionals. And they are investing further in, 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 in hedge funds and, and those kind of alternatives, which makes sense. For private individuals, I don't think it's a good idea. Prior to this interview, you mentioned to me Spotify and RAP as sort of new opportunities. Do you feel that sort of entrepreneurial organizations such as these are where future wealth lies? Clearly. Um, I, I don't say that we're not going to continue in an industrial world because obviously that's, that's how growth is, is being made. But 
when you look at where the, 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 the new energy is coming from, it's clearly from uh, you know, the, the new technology, the, the speed of information, uh, social networks, uh, and, and it's really driving the process at the moment. And um, interestingly enough, it's uh, very young people that drive this, and it's driving the younger generation. And for people older, including myself, uh, it's hard, of course, to, to catch up, but when you do get the grab, grasp of what they're doing, you do realize that it's, it's really, really something that's, uh, that's going to change our world, and it's already starting. These products seem to encompass consumer spending, social media, and really seem to link back to what you've said before about alternative investments and new ideas. Do you think, therefore, this is where future wealth lies? Uh, well, one thing, one thing's for sure, the people that are behind this are definitely going to create wealth uh, for, for themselves, that, that's for sure. Uh, but it's also, I think, where people want to go now. We've been uh, very pessimistic for the last couple of years, and it's, I think it's really time for us to start to look at that, uh, Monty Python, at the good sides in life. And uh, actually, I want to mention, I, I was part of a presentation for RAP this week in Geneva and Zurich. And um, the, the founder of this company, Andreas Ehm, had a very, very good uh, slide, uh, which said that you, this was the best period in, in history to start new companies. And in 2012, in January 2012, how many people do you actually hear say this? There's so much uh, pessimism that it's great to see that people are you know, really optimistic about where the future is going and they're ready to do something to create something better for, for, for people around them. I think it's great. Pat, thank you very much. Thank you. That's all we've got time for here this week at the Dukescopy TV Centre. However, please do join us next week when we'll be bringing you interviews with BCV, BNP and Gaia Capital. For now though, goodbye. <laughs>